Welcome to Back Patio Devotions. Hope you got your coffee, your Bible, your smartphone, however you get into God's Word. Let's do that this morning. Today, I'm calling this one, Don't Be the Enemy, Love the Enemy. And uh, I'm excited to talk about this one. It's been on my heart for a while, off and on. Uh, just it, It's based off of... I'll say the golden rule, you know, the, it's very basic, I feel like we learned about it in elementary school, Sunday school growing up, we heard it all the time, it was posted all over the walls, and we just kind of were like, yeah, 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 do to others what you want them to do to you, so on, so forth, type thing. Um, so, what, if it's so easy, why is it so hard to do, or do we just, you know, forget about it all the time, I don't know, but it's just something with everything going on today in society and and culture and all this mess that's going on you see in the media, it just really hit hard with me and I've just kind of been debating on whether I should talk about it because I, like I said in the last video, I don't want to blame anybody or call out specific people or groups but I just want to talk to us Christians specifically but this message is for everyone um, so if it's the easiest concept why is it the hardest uh, you know make an honest assessment of yourself um, I have to do this you know this hit me hard um, are you someone's enemy instead you know let's let's quit thinking about somebody else being the enemy Think about yourself being the enemy of someone else. Um, so let's get into that. Uh, you know, why why can we not treat everyone else the same? Why is it hard for us to treat everybody else the same? Uh, you know, we all want to be right. Uh, we think we know better in certain situations. Um, when we're treated bad, we want to turn around and make somebody else feel bad, point out some of their flaws so that we can feel better when they feel bad, um, you know, if you have any more ideas of why you don't think we can treat everybody the same, put it in the comments section. You know, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, you know, but it, it, sadly enough, I guess, or oddly enough, it wasn't until I was a grown adult that, you know, when I reread the Bible through the scriptures, that Jesus basically was the one who pinned the golden rule. Uh, you know, do to others what you would want them to do to you. Uh, so, you know, I, I thought that was, it was like eye-opening experience when I saw that in the Bible. You know, it says, you know, I don't know in some of your Bibles, I know in mine you know, it has little like subtitles and it says love for enemies. So I want to get into that. Um, I'm going to read from Luke Luke, Luke chapter 6, blah, 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 blah. Luke chapter 6, verse 27 through 36, but I'm also going to use part of Matthew 5, 43 through 48 in this devotion. So let me take a sip of my coffee and let's get into the Word. So in Luke chapter 6, verse 27 through 36, it says, Love for enemies. But if you are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Pray for the happiness of those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. If someone demands your coat, offer your shirt also. Give what you have to anyone who asks you for it. And when things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. Do for others as you would like them to do for you. There's a golden rule. Do you think you deserve credit merely for loving those who love you? Even the sinners do that. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, is that so wonderful? Even sinners do that much. And if you lend money only to those... Sorry, my dog's barking. Lend money only to those who can repay you, what good is that? Even sinners will lend their own kind for a full return. Love your enemies. Do good to them lend to them and don't be concerned that they might not repay then your reward from heaven will be very great and you will truly be acting as children the most high 
for he is kind to the unthankful and to those who are wicked. You must be compassionate, just as your father is compassionate. So like I said, um, I want to use that and Matthew 5, 43-48. So first, let's define, using scripture, let's define what who our enemy is, or if you're the enemy, let's define what that means. Um, from Matthew 5, 44, number one, those who persecute. And, you know, I took it even further. Persecute means to treat unfairly, unkind because of, get this, race, political views, and religion. Ouch. You know, that's, that's something that really stuck out to me. Uh, think about it. Are you someone's enemy? Have you persecuted anybody? Have you treated anybody unkind or unfairly because of their skin color or because of their political views uh, or because of their religion? You know, have you, even in your own mind, said something hateful about somebody? You know, thought something hateful about somebody because of those three things? Uh, that's a big one. I could go on and on about that. Um, back in Luke 6, those who hate you, that's another definition of the enemy in the Bible. Those who hate you, have you hated somebody? You know, Jesus said, if you hate somebody in your mind, you have committed murder. You know, if you are angry, you have committed murder. That's pretty deep. Um, number three, those who curse you. Uh, again, curse, I took that and defined that a little more as... Sorry, flies everywhere. I guess that's what you get when you have outside devotion. You have dogs, birds, cars, flies. Anyway, number three, curse. Talking bad to you or you talking bad to, to them. Um, talking bad about somebody. Kicking dirt on somebody's name, you know, or reputation. Saying all kinds of negative things to someone or about them um, so have you cursed anyone uh, and lastly those who hurt you whether it be emotionally or physically um, so that's the first thing that's what we want to do define who the enemy is or define what we're doing to somebody maybe um, so secondly like I mentioned at the first of the video with everything going on today all these current events um, besides COVID, you know, I feel like there's another global pandemic, and I know pandemic usually means like a, a disease that's infecting the world, but I believe that there's a disease of hate, of anger, of bitterness going around in this world, and has been going around since the beginning of time, pretty much. Um, you know, to me, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what side you're on. You know, if you're uh, black lives matter, if you're back the blue, all lives matter, anti-maskers, anti-vaxxers, Republican, Democrat, whatever. Whatever side you're on, you do you. I'm not really going to get into that or um, really talk about those, but the reason why I bring that up is because in today's society, I feel like we have turned all of those things into an enemy from something else. Like, you know... Here in Midland, we have a lot of Republicans or whatever. So, you know, I feel like a lot of conservatives consider the liberals the enemy. And, you know, that's kind of why I bring it up as all those groups is from one side, the other side is the enemy. Um, so whatever whatever you back, whatever you support, you do you. I'm not, I'm not bashing that, but what I do want to point out Christians, especially if you call yourself a Christian, you know, I'm, I'm going to step on your toes and I'm probably not going to have very many views or subscriptions after this or whatever. I'll probably lose some and that's fine. I want to speak truth. I want to speak life and I want to push you, like I said. Uh, but if you call yourself a Christian, are you practicing the example that Jesus said in the Bible that we just read in Luke chapter 6 and Matthew 5. You know, if you say that you're a Christian, that means you follow what Jesus instructed, right? Are we showing love to those opposite of us? 
who don't see eye to eye with us. Um, and a side note, if you are not a Christian and you're watching this, you know, I pray that you can forgive and love those of us who have persecuted you, who have hurt you, who have hated you, who have talked bad about you. I pray that you can love and forgive us, even like the Bible said, you know, that you can just show us the love that Jesus showed us, even if you don't believe in Jesus. You know, it, it rings true for everybody to do the golden rule, basically. Um, so anyway, how are we to see true justice? How are we to see true unity, uh, true healing, acceptance, joy, peace, and love if, if we only love those who love us? If, you know, if we only, uh, you know, take care of people who are already healthy, basically, or if we only accept people of the same skin color or of the same political views or of the same religion, if we only do special favors for those people, what good is it going to do? How are we going to see these things if we only do that? You know, like it said in the Bible. So what if you do that? What good is that for you? You're not going to get any more credit than you really deserve. Um, you know, Jesus came, when Jesus came, he took what we thought was right side up, you know, what we thought we were doing right, and flipped it back into place, flipped it back to how it should have been. Um, you know, his message wasn't popular then, and it's not popular now. You know, why, why is that? Why is it not popular now? You know, we have one side that has to be better than the other. One race has to be superior than the other. One religion has to be more right than the other. Someone somewhere always has to have another way to get one plus one to equal two. And if somebody has something else to say about that, you know, we want to challenge them. We raise our voices, we raise our fists, and we get angry and we do everything we can in our power to try to get them to take our quote unquote way, to see it our way. Is that love? You know, as, as Christians, are we guilty of that too? Do we do that a lot too? You know, even in denominations. We have all these different denominations because someone some way didn't like what was being said and took something from the Bible and was like, no, we need it to, I want it to be this way and, and kind of ran off with it. You know, we have all these different denominations, but we are all one body under Christ. Matthew chapter 25, 35 through 40. I want to read that real quick. Kind of to answer those questions I asked earlier. How are we to see true justice, true unity, and love? Let's, let's read this. Um, it says, and this is Jesus talking. He says, For I was hungry... And you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? Or a stranger and show you hospitality? Or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see and give you... Did I say that? Yeah. When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will tell them, I assure you, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it for me. Um, you know, I that whole scripture and more is basically, he's, is Jesus talking about our reward in heaven um, and his kingdom and him separating the the good from the bad. Um, but as the Bible says, you will reap what you sow. You know, Galatians 6, 7 is, you know, you will reap what you sow. So I believe that once entered into heaven, you're going to benefit greatly from what you did here on earth in the name of Christ. Um, you know, I don't think we get into heaven on our good works alone. I, I don't necessarily believe that. I don't. I'll have to look up scripture and kind of back that up. Don't hold me to that. Don't hold that as truth. That's kind of what I personally believe. So here, you know, Jesus 
is talking and he's saying all these things. It says, I was hungry, you fed me. I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, you invited me into your home. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you cared for me. I was in prison, you visited me. I tell you the truth, when you did it for the one of the least of these, you were doing it for me. So that's how I feel like we can answer those questions from earlier. Is As Christians, when we show love to those who persecute, who hate, who curse and hurt, we do it for Jesus. We do it for His glory. Um, you know, like I said in Matthew 5:45 and Luke 6:35, both say, "If you do these things, you will truly be acting as children of the Most High." You now, if we can all do that simple task, do to others what you would like them to do to you, especially us Christians, I guarantee you will not only see your reward in heaven. I guarantee you will see you will reap the benefits of your actions today you will see the benefits of your actions today i believe it with my whole heart um you know i'm the difference you are the difference us together unified is the difference that we can make in this world today you know to make it a better place let's show the world who real genuine christians are you know, and let's lead the charge. Let's lead the charge to loving those whom society says is our enemy, who is different. You know, we can't do it alone. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, 20, 5, 22 through 23 says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So if we have that, if we're led by the Spirit and we're letting that fruit be produced in our lives and we're showing that, that there is no law here on earth, no law in the Bible that it can come against that. You know, it doesn't matter what they may do to try to stop. In fact, I just read an article this morning. You know, you may say there's a law, but there is a people being arrested in Kenosha giving food to the protesters. Now, that may look like law, but in fact, it's not. There's nothing against that. You may be put in handcuffs or whatever for doing good for somebody. You may be persecuted for doing good. You know, Jesus was, in fact, but there is no law against it. It's just somebody wanting to be right, wanting to shut down anything good going on in this world. But it can't happen. You know, I may catch some flack from this next thing I'm going to say. I'm going to close with this. Well, I say close. Maybe not. I used to be a youth minister. And I know how ministers say when they say close. It's another 30 minutes. But saying all that, we need to love the person of color. Love the white person. Love the cops. The politicians. The protesters. The rioters. The... Baptist, the Pentecostal, the Church of Christ, the Presbyterian, love the Muslim, love the Buddhist, the homosexual, the transgender, the prostitute, the drug dealer, the drunk, the murderer, the pedophile, the list can go on and on and on. But simply put, don't be the enemy. Love the enemy. I'll stop with this. There's a song by the Rhett Walker Band. I don't know if you've heard of them. It's called The Mystery. But I really love this song because I feel like it speaks truth to me and it speaks truth of the Bible. And in it he says, You know, Jesus ain't worried about tattoos and cigarettes or if you wear a golden cross around your neck. More about loving your neighbor and giving to the poor I want to love like that and nothing more. So I want to encourage you this week and next week to do something for somebody that you may consider an enemy. Because you never know. You might be that somebody's enemy. So don't be the enemy. Love the enemy. God bless you guys. Thank you for listening. Hit the subscribe button. The like button comment because I want to hear from you I want to know what you're thinking and again 
I'm probably going to say this all the time. I look forward to doing this. Tune in two weeks from now. We're going to talk about something else in the Bible. Um, let's close out with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, I just love you and thank you for your blessings, God. I thank you for what you're doing in this world, even though things look bleak and things look sad and depressing with COVID going around and protests and riots, but God, I know that you reign supreme over all. And God, I just pray that, especially through us Christians, God, that you can help us to show the love that you've shown us to anybody and everybody, God, that that we just reach out and do to others what we would have them do to us, Lord God, that you know we want to be treated with respect and dignity and, and love and, and kindness, God, and I pray that we can exude that and show it to others, to anybody, it doesn't matter, because we all bleed the same color blood, we all breathe the same air, we are all made in the image of God, and Lord, I just pray that you use us for your kingdom, for your glory, God, and to make this world a better place because, God, it is us. It is not people we vote into office. It's us, God. If we take a stand, if we get up and we go, God, we can do this, God. We can do it together. And, Lord, I just pray blessings over everyone watching, God. I pray that you'll be with them and their families. God, watch over every step that they take, Father God. And, Lord, just help us to have a great week this week. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Love you.